I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the Drive Home to Hawkesbury, where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property, and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live, love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you, so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this video. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy, and I'm on the drive home, joined by Catherine Hams. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm um, in a nice, warm situation, so I'm quite happy. <laughs> it's a lovely, sunny day out there, though, isn't it? But it's like the winter chills definitely kicked in now. Snow is on its way, I would say, don't you? Oh, definitely. You, you find that you get cold and then you get that bitter. Yes. And it's that bitter that you can feel. I mean, I feel it like it comes off the mountains and it's like, okay, it's snowing up there somewhere and, and you could bet your bottom dollar it is. <laughs> I know. And when you look over to the mountains and you can see those, the, the shaping of the cumulus clouds that have got that particular snow look yeah. in them. Um, you know it's on its way. So I definitely agree. We've had a different change over the last couple of weeks. It was sort of like, yeah. when is summer going to end in the first instance? And then, you know, are we going to get any cold weather for winter or coming into winter? And um, I think it's finally arriving. Yeah, I think it is. I'm wondering, you know, do you think maybe the seasons are changing around? Potentially, they could be. I mean, we should get somebody on about um, the climate and how it, the weather and how it's changing. Actually, next week I'm going to be having a discussion with um, Drew Marshall, who's one of the tower operators um, of the RAF base. So yeah. he might be able to give us some indications in regards to the weather. I'm sure he'll have a lot to give us indications on about things like that. Yes, I think so. Um, and I think next weekend we've got the Holistic Wellness and Spiritual Expo coming up. That's on the right. Sunday at Panthers North Richmond. So that should be oh, a good okay. day out. Yeah. So are they doing that out in the car park at Panthers there? Is that their idea? or? I think they're actually going to do it within the complex. So if you enter okay. into um, the complex, it will be inside and there will be stall set up, local businesses. I will be there also um, talking all things homes and feng shui. And I'm going to be joined by Michelle Seeger, who is uh, co-creator of a lot of things feng shui with what we've been doing. And she's a yeah. biologist and working on healthy homes and how to... Yep create a positive environment so if you've got uh, mold or emf or you know things in the house that aren't going to be that great for you uh, she specializes mm. in that and uh, we can help you with the process with your home and make sure that it mm. just feels better when you're living in it because you spend a lot of time at home and at work and you want to make sure that those environments are optimal and we do and we talk so much about the home and how much it means to us because it's one of the most or the most expensive purchase we ever make isn't it really Oh, absolutely. You're so right. And talking yeah. about expensive purchases, um, I know that we all sort of look at houses and cars and those sorts of things as expensive mm. purchases, but the vehicles that uh, we probably don't put as much time and money into as ourselves. And mm. you had a great discussion the other week uh, with a naturopath, co-naturopath, um, co and um, maybe you could share a few little snippets from that. I thought it was a fascinating um, video that you both did on Hashimoto's and mm -hmm. how to overcome that. So Sandra Stewart uh, is a naturopath. She works in the Bondi area. We actually did. We uh, studied together our naturopathic degree. And um, it so happened that she had Hashimoto's and found out while she was doing her degree. And I found out in the later part. So she's helped me a lot. But the thing was, I think there's so much hype about thyroid conditions that Mm. Uh, people will jump on the bandwagon of saying they've got a thyroid condition where it could be something else. And it's extremely important not to misdiagnose and not do a lot of self-diagnosing. So mm. Sandra and I really wanted to get on and be, um, as I do all my talks, deconstructed <laughs> and um, <laughs> just talk about what it was like from our own personal point of view to have Hashimoto's. And she made a lot of relevant um, sort of uh, remarks about the situation. But what I really like, Rachel, is that we had uh, people from Denmark, from the US and the yeah. UK, um, and I had a lot of follow-up afterwards from 
that and also the groups on Facebook followed up with us too because we're actually giving um, like really good sound advice and yet not trying to, we weren't selling ourselves as naturopaths, we we're basically selling ourselves as people with knowledge so people were safe. Yeah, so it was absolutely. Great. Yeah, mm. I think that there's, that's a great thing that you do because there should be more of it and I think that's essentially why we set up this. I mean, you're a naturopath, a hypnotherapist, I'm a real estate agent. We're not trained in any of this, but we just wanted to share, I guess, different ideas, different topics, community things. And anybody that has ideas or thoughts or comments, we'd love your feedback. We'd love your questions. Uh, we don't um, we, we don't have, you know, no holes barred with us, is there, Kath? There's not. There's not. And, I mean, the thing is, like, from that one I did the other night with Sandra, she really enjoyed doing it, and we're going to follow up by... Uh, deconstructing the uh, thyroid condition even more. We'll do it monthly. That's our monthly thing we're going to do. And yes. myself, um, I'm going to do the pro bonos on Thursdays and just open it up that if people want some free naturopathic advice, they can get it, even with hypnotherapy, any mind ment you know, mind issues, anything. So, you know, it's maybe right later you could put up my website or something so people can hook into that. But, um, look, it is. It's about the people of the community of the Hawkesbury and that's exactly what you and I want to do. We want to pick up subjects just not pertaining to our own fields but other fields. And I think it's good. And sometimes you upset people and sometimes you don't. But, hey, that's personalities. If we didn't have that, what would we have to talk about? <laughs> exactly. And there's always two sides to every story and it's good exactly. to hear all of the stories. And it's important that they're aired and it's important that the community comes together and, and we can do that. Talking about community, we've got some exciting news. A big shout out to Kylie McNamara. Hello, Kylie. I haven't spoken to you for a little while, but I believe little Brody is heading over to Fiji. Um, mm. The under 16s is, is organising a fundraiser for the road to Fiji for their um, Rouse Hill rhinos, yep. as it was. Yep. So yep. that sounds like a fun. I might try and get Kylie to get Brody online. Um, in the next few weeks and see if we can help. They're heading out in September, so we've got plenty of time. But if anybody wanted to support the local club, um, they would be more than happy to to receive your um, your your feedback and your donations, whether it's for the jerseys, for them being on field. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dane. How are you going? He really likes this program. Thank you so much, Dane. We really appreciate your feedback. Um, yeah, and... In regards to the, the team sports, anybody that's got a sporting organisation or somebody that wants to get the word out there about some event that's coming up, that's what Kath, yeah. Catherine and myself are all about. You know, we just want to yeah. share the word and we want to share the spirit of the local community. So, yeah. And the thing is, too, even if people have got things out there that they're trying to raise funds for and they might be stuck for ideas, you know, mm -hmm. shoot it along to Rach and I because the things we've done a lot of fundraising, mm -hmm. been involved with a lot. So, yes. you know, it's always good to have that other person because when you're involved in thinking on something so much, you tend to not look around and you need yes. that third person that's not involved to, you know, just give you that tip. And I know that we'd both be very happy to help out with whatever we can. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that and um, we're there for you. And, and Dane, he always tunes into our program. Thank you very much. I haven't spoken to Dane for a little while, but he if anybody needs transport to and from the airport, he's the best transport guy that there is locally and, um, and abroad. So um, if anybody needs somebody like that to take them to the airport, let me know and I'll put you in touch with Dane. Yeah. Very good. So I heard that um, you were saying something about the um, ghost tours that they do or the sleep out, was it, that you did? Yes, yes, and it was so spooky. Spooky-dooky, <laughs> <laughs> eh? Spooky-dooky indeed. Yeah, no, it was absolutely yeah. fabulous. I went to the Australiana Pioneer Village um, and Peter runs the the um, spooky-dooky tours and the after-hour spooky-dooky tours. There's some local spooky-dooky tours as well. They do the ghost tours just before and you get all of the history, which is great, which I can put mm. the website up for those ghost tours. But there's also the one after and they essentially call themselves the ghost hunters because they're not not actually, um, you know, having a look at the history so much. They do have a look at the different, you know, the Mitchell Colleges and the different cottages throughout and what year that they were built and what application they had in the community. But um, Australian Anna Pioneer Village, for those that don't know, it's a little village um, with, with lots of history and lots of new history as well. And on weekends you can go there and join in the fun and just walk down memory lane and just see old buildings and relics and 
um, different different places. So there's a lot of history there. And essentially what they're saying is that there's a lot of spiritual activity too. So, um, yeah, it was fascinating. And we went to three different houses within that. I won't give too much away, but uh, we made contact with a few different people. And what they were essentially doing is you go into a room and they would have you – they have they would have you blindfolded and they would put white noise on your ears and then they would film this so they're looking for movement they've got special cameras that can videotape this and they tour a particular technique to um you know invoke the spirits i suppose and it was fascinating just to watch and see and listen and then there was another one they had an app which i've since downloaded it's called echo vox for anybody that wants to do that and you can actually ask it questions and the answers can sometimes come through so what we were doing is asking those questions on the on the night and it was coming through like a radio you know how in the olden i don't know 60s or what have you and they had those old radios and um, tuning in it was almost like the aliens yeah. were coming in on this this yeah. radio so that was fascinating um, mm-hmm. and then we just went for a walk around and, and I also learned something else new on the night it's called uh, I don't know whether you've heard of it or anybody else has heard of it but it's called table tipping and it's essentially you know your grandmother used to have an old tabletop <clears throat> pardon me and you used to put your coffee on there and it was only sort of yeah. probably 30 centimeters 50 centimeters tall and you'd put your hands on the top of this table, each one. You'd all sit around in a circle. So there might be, I don't know, five of us, six of us, and we all sat around the circle, and the more energy in the hands on the table would be better. Mm-hmm. And just sitting there thinking, no, oh, nothing is going to happen. What, what, what could possibly yeah. happen? But yeah. then um, this table, once we start asking some questions, this table starts to move, like literally the whole yeah. table yeah. tipped up. And went to this side and so yes no questions and yeah. you know who do they want to contact what yeah. was the you know, the name of the person then we we're spelling out the name and um dylan came through so uh he was in one of the back back areas of the australiana pioneer village and um, it was fascinating a really good time mm-hmm. and if anybody ever wanted to go they do have them regularly so i will put the website up for people yeah. and yeah. you can, can go on the ghost it started at 11 p.m and yeah. went to um, 6 a.m. the next morning and then I back straight up for work uh, yeah. after that. So it was terrific. And, and Lynn came along. She's the local value. Hi, Lynn. How are you? Um, and Peter and Robin and Alex and a few other people that we know, which is great. Um, so it was just a terrific, fun night out. And just the equipment was fascinating that they had. Have you had experiences with ghost tours or going anywhere uh, on ghost uh, tours? No, I'm too much of a scaredy cat. I won't do that. No. <laughs> No, I, I um I I I I personally believe there's something there, and mm. I find it very fascinating. I was a very big disbeliever many many moons ago, and then things like you know tarot cards and things like that, and people that mm. know you. And I mean, I think I told you just before my birthday this year, I went and had a reading, which I do every birthday, um, and it mentioned something about one of my aunts that was passing and my aunt did two weeks later so you know I don't disbelieve um yeah but I mean going to where you did on a winter's night I <laughs> high five you because I like my warm bed and my hot water bottle and um that, that, that's my options I'd have to say in a winter's night <laughs> I was definitely the Michelin woman that night. I was rugged up upon rugged up upon rugged up. I think I had four jackets on me. I had layers underneath yeah. that. I had a singlet on. It was all just for the comfort because walking around in minus degree temperatures, it wasn't minus. I'm being dramatic. It was probably yeah. know, two or three degrees, but it was yeah. very cold. And um, yeah. and one of the first exercises that we did was go down to one of the, the shearing shed, I think it was, and um, the shearing shed and said, oh, you'll be re- really good because there's heaters in there and you'll be so warm. And I'm thinking, oh, this is cool, you know, and going on this tour, yeah. it's freezing cold, walking down this dirt track, yeah. and then you get down to the shearing shed, you walk in, and it's this massive warehouse style, like a big yeah. open with shearing shed. Yeah. You know how big shearing sheds are. Yeah. yeah. And you know what the heater was? It Go was on. a bar heater on the wall. It was about that big. And I'm thinking ah. <laughs> <laughs> they oversold that. They talk about real estate uh, agents, but let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, that could have been your karma too, you know. <laughs> it could have been.
been. It could have been. Yeah. So See, isn't that amazing, you know, our expectations because we're cold and we're thinking, oh, well, there's going to be all this. Well, they delivered. There was a heater. Exactly. They did. Yeah. And it was a great heater and I was very yeah. thankful for it on the night because it was freezing. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you, you keep talking. I'm going to try and find a video here and I'll see if I can play that online for everybody whilst you're doing what um, just having a bit of a chat and I'll try and find one of these. Um, well, what I'm going to talk about is that yesterday, well, actually yesterday evening, I was asked to go and do a speaker's gig for Beyond Blue down in Balmain and it was for one of the church groups down there. So off um, I went down to Balmain to do that speakers group. And it was, um, look, it was only, say, maybe 15 people that came out, but I, the likelihood of any of them listening today would be nil. So, but anyway... <laughs> They did come out and they were a mature group of women and guys that came out and they asked quite a lot of questions, which I love interactiveness when we get that. But yes. what I want to do, Rachel, is last week we were talking about mental health and I just want to do the statistics. It will take me one second. I'm not going to go on about this. But the statistics being that uh, one in six women and one in eight men will experience depression and that one in three women and one in five men will have anxiety. So... It's very real and uh, for the people that contacted me after this last week mm. and got in touch with me, again, I welcome anyone who wants to contact me and find out what they can do, phone numbers and how to sort it, even if I can't help them, to put it further to where they can get help. Yeah, look, I think that's a really valid point. Mm. And, you know, listening to those statistics, it's more prevalent than we think and totally. segues to, you know, what um, the book of, of the week that I've been uh, looking at there's a book that I looked at um, probably three or four years ago failing forward by John Maxwell and yeah. it's all about that it's all about failing it's all about you know two steps forward one step back and I think that a lot of us we don't realize that everybody's trying to do the same sorts of things trying to make the best of what they have and sometimes it is hard like you said sometimes you do need mm -hmm. to put your hand up and say okay I need some help with whether it's a business or I need some help with things mm. around the house or I need some help with anything in life um, mm. because I think a lot of us, we're all too proud to, to put our hand up and say, um, you know, can, can you help me this weekend? Mm. I think that's true and I think it's sometimes not even help. They just want someone to listen. Mm. And, that, mm. and I know from my experience at Lifeline that we had people ringing just to listen. So, you know, if there's, and I will not go on about this, but the thing is that if someone's not doing what they used to do or mm. they're not enjoying themselves or anything's changed for mm. more than a week or so, make time, make a space, don't have it in a crowded place and make it so that person knows you're actually with them and you're listening to them. And mm. that, that's the biggest help you can give. So yeah, anyway, no. how'd you go with the video? Did you get it yes, going? Yes, I or think not? I did. Um, it's sort of more sound. I don't know whether you can hear this okay. or not. Um, wrong video. It's always uh, this okay. is live. So this is back to me, and I now jump in again. Can you hear that? You can. It's very rough. Very rough. Anyone there? Are you having any luck? Uh, Robert's in many messages for Robert. Could you hear what what that was? What was it? It's um that's essentially what it is. You you put it out there through this echo box and yeah. they have spirit boxes, they have they're different transmitters. So essentially they put them out there, connect them, and then the voice comes through in different mediums. So oh, you'll okay. ask it a question, is there anybody in the house with us now? Yeah. And you, you wait about 10 seconds, 20 seconds. And mm. sometimes it'll say yes or sometimes it'll say no. And so then you ask it another question, you know, mm. did you die in this house or if have you, mm. you know, because we're talking about spirits obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so we're just trying to find out the history of the property. And yeah. it was fascinating actually. Some of them, like somebody asked about a pet yeah. And then the, the, the word pet came through in this. And, and you're thinking, I'm just wanting to hear this. And I, I think this is actually coming through. But it really yeah. was. It was just, um, yeah. it was fascinating, really, really fascinating. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it was interesting. Very um, good. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to share with people today, too, is every week on Monday, we do Motivational Monday online for Rachel Goldsworthy Realty um, and we put a post out so if anybody wants to like or share we're happy to um, happy to share the love and the quote for this week is believe and act as if you 
if, as if it were impossible to fail. And how many of us would, I guess, achieve so much more if that's what we had, you know, if we had that thought that we're so, so not going to fail, we'd just attempt everything. We'd just say yes to everything, wouldn't we? Well, I think that's what you're doing when you create your pathway and I think that you do it on a conscious and subconscious is, and you just don't realise, and that's what I've done before with people mm. in real in training them in creating their pathways and their dreams are possible. So, mm. I mean, there's a great big thing to be said for fake it till you make it because that's actually it. It's actually yeah. true. You know, I mean, if you're living the creation of what you want, well, then you believe it, then it's going to happen. If you're not going to believe it or live it, how would you expect anyone else to believe in you? Exactly. And that's what it comes to, yeah. That's exactly so, right. No, I completely agree with that. I remember when I first started in real estate, it was two puppy dogs and a cat and my place. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I thought, how am I going to make all this happen? I really have mm -hmm. no idea. And then I just sat down, wrote it all down, wh what where the vision was, where I wanted the business to go, what I perceived was going to happen. And every day it's still, it took years to get there, but you sort of mm -hmm. get to that point where, it's things start happening and then they start falling into place and you go, oh, my gosh, I wrote that down four years ago. And, yeah. you know, it, you go back through yeah. different things and it's fascinating and, um, yeah, I think it's yeah. really – and I think it comes back to what you were talking about in one of our earlier videos about that unlimitless thinking and being yeah. – you know, I know that some days aren't that great for all of us and sometimes yeah. we've just got to pick up sticks and move on and do what we've got to do and, and just be the best people we can possibly be on that day with the energy that we have. But essentially, if you keep that focus and stay focused on that point that you want to be or where you want to be or what you want to do or how you want to come, you know, help out with the family or help out with other people in your life, um, stay true to that. Eventually you get there, don't you? In some way, shape or form. You do. And I mean, the thing is that, and I, I so much um, take note of people saying, well, it's easy for you, you're sitting there, you're saying it. And they could say that about each, each of us, Rachel, mm, that, you know, absolutely. you're sitting there, I'm sitting there. But, you yeah. know, the thing is that when you listen to someone's story, and that's why Beyond Blue is good and other places that advocate people to do stories, that, you know, the struggles and things like that that people go through. And it doesn't mean that anyone's any better than another person. No, it, not at all. It's just in certain places in your life. And I think at times we have to remember that if we keep opening up the baggage we're carrying, we're going to keep wearing the same clothes. So yeah. we have to get to a point that we put the baggage behind. We either say the clothes are too small or they're too big or, you know what, it's not the fashion, hey. <laughs> and we have to choose a new lot of clothes. And I think that that's it. And I like clothing because if you look at metaphors, as you take off each layer, you're getting rid of the old. And yeah, I think absolutely. that's great. It works very well in a subconscious manner too. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's a, a valid point, though, you know, because we've all been through different things in our lives and we're all, you know, have other to, challenges that we, we will have in the future, I'm sure. But it's all a matter of, um, you know, surrounding yourself with people that you love and surrounding yourself with people that are on the same page and, you know, can be there to support you through those as you can be to support them through other things mm -hmm. as well. Because, you, because uh, you know, you were saying about the awareness before. I mean, I didn't realise that the stats were as high as that with the, mm -hmm. um, you know, what you're talking about. So it's fascinating. Yeah. I, I think that also what we need to do is that sometimes people, they feel they need a lot of people around them to be able to do, but there's also a lot of stuff inside and self-empowerment is extremely important and to learn to love yourself um, and to be happy being by yourself. And, yeah. I mean, if you can get to that point, if you can't, you know, there's places that can help you to get to that place. Um, mm -hmm. Headspace is very good for young people. It, it's, and I really do highly recommend it. I've had a lot of good feedback over What's the years. What's Headspace? From, well, it's a place where younger people can go and mm -hmm. they can uh, get certain counselling. It's free to a certain mm -hmm. point. Okay. Uh, teachers meditation and things like that. So for our young people... Um, it's good to have those things. There's things for men's line and all these different things that, you know, mm -hmm. one day what we might do is we might put a list together and put them up on your site yeah, and I might sure. put them up on mine too. And yeah. it's just a really good thing because when I was talking to this group last night, they didn't know and a lot of people don't know. So, yeah. um, you know, always 
never be fearful to ask. Never be fearful yeah. to drop Rachel a line, you know, even private message you if you want to have that discretion because that's fair enough. You, you're a person who deserves respect. And same with me, you know. It doesn't mean we're going to talk about you next Monday. We totally respect everyone like that. So, you know, yeah, we've all, great. I mean, I've gone through my amount of, you know, baggage. I'm sure you have too, Rachel. We all do. It's what life is. It's how we live and learn. Yeah, and those that say that they haven't, I don't think that they're in the real world. It's sort of, it's part and parcel. It's part of the journey. It's part of the whole process. And I think, um, you know, adversity is good because it shows you different lessons and then you're able to move forward and then, you know, go and learn other lessons throughout the life. So, uh, no, it's fascinating. Now, if people wanted to get in contact with you, Catherine, how would they do that? They'd do it by the phone number you go to put up on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> You know I'm the fastest typer. And, and I think everyone, eight, is it something? 411. 411. 865. There we go. I'm showing. So everyone, everyone listening out there, what I'd like to do is to see if after 10 weeks we can see if Rachel's quicker getting my phone number up there. We'll do a survey and see how many people will say, yeah, she's really good now. She gets it up quickly. She's getting better. She's been practising. Yeah. She's working yeah. it out. Yeah. She actually remembers your number now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should uh, I should practise, but that should be fun. All right, and if anybody wants to get in touch with me in regards to homes or real estate in the Hawkesbury or abroad, my contact number is 457-7964. I can speak faster than I can type sometimes. And uh, equally, you can catch me on the website, rachelgoldsworthy.com.au. So thank you very much for everyone being online and Dane for checking in and saying hello and um, Catherine for your great advice as always. And we look forward to seeing everybody on the next episode. See you next Monday. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.